I'd like to share with you some pointers and hopefully helpful tips that I've gathered over the past two decades or so of praying. It's been a bumpy ride for sure, with its own ups and downs, with days, weeks, and months of not being able to pray at all, to some really great moments where prayer really pulled in clutch in my life. And I don't think, to be honest, that I'd be able to continue without it, both in moments of prayer that swept me off my feet, and in times where it became an important part of my daily routine and schedule. This isn't the time, nor perhaps the place, to share my personal journey with prayer, or where I'm currently at in my own prayer life. But what I would like to do is to share some tips and advice that I've gleaned over the past few years of praying in the hopes that they might be helpful for you, together with a bit of a practical guide into prayer. The first thing that I'd like to say is that I don't think that one needs to be particularly religious, whatever that word means, or even believe in God, again, whatever that word means, to engage in prayer. Prayer, insofar as I understand it, is an act and state of being that can be practiced and experienced by anyone. Indeed, in many of the world's great religious traditions, the act of prayer isn't even limited to just humans. Mountains, rivers, birds and trees, the sun and the moon, all get swept along in the act of prayer. I think we're actually at a fascinating moment in history where some of the deepest truths and the richest practices cultivated in the heart of religions for millennia are now accessible to anyone looking to deepen and add meaning to their lives without wanting or needing to take on all of the external trappings that dogmatic forms of religion often come with. And the timing could not be better, as a new, softer, simpler, humbler, more tender form of living is emerging, bringing us back in touch with ourselves, nature, community, and reality. And prayer, I believe, must and will be at the heart of this revolution, of this returning to ourselves. It always has been. You might have all kinds of preconceived notions about what prayer is and what it's not. I'd like to invite you to suspend whatever you know about prayer, set it aside for a moment, and indulge me in a fresh articulation of prayer. I'd like to present prayer as an opportunity to slow down, to feel held and seen, to pour out your heart to a listening ear, to center yourself in silence, and to emerge re-empowered to face whatever comes your way with love and compassion. Prayer, as described in classical mystical texts, is a moment of intimacy with the divine, often depicted in the loving language of the Song of Songs, of lovers tangled and wrapped in one another, that place of intimacy in which anything more than a whisper would be excessive. How then do we enter that space of intimacy? How do we enter into that tender place of being held? We're going to start with a direct, practical guide to get into prayer and then move on to some broader considerations. Let's begin in our bodies and work our way up from there. First, choose a quiet place where you'll be free of distractions. Dim the lights, put your phone away. Sit down on your bum, straighten your back, Keep your eyes open or closed as you please. You can wrap yourself in a scarf or a shawl and create a little prayer cocoon for yourself. Put your hands in your laps, open palms facing upwards. Create a posture of receptivity in your body, which you should be able to feel. Now, slow down and breathe. Deep and slow breaths. This modern world spins very quickly. Prayer is not of this world. Prayer is slow. Slow down. Feel your breath as you inhale and exhale slowly. Bring your attention to the way that it feels in your chest, to the rise and the fall of your shoulders as you breathe. Feel yourself in that rhythm of nature. Let your inner tide roll in and out with ease. Let your trunk sway with the wind on your lips. Feel yourself as part of the sway of nature, because you are. Move inside and feel your body. Trace your awareness from your head to your toes, wiggling all of your body parts as you bring your attention to them, to all of your body's beautiful trunks, branches, twigs, and leaves. Next, 
bring your attention to your senses, to your miraculous sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. What can you see right now? What can you hear in the silence? What smells are tickling your nose? What can you taste in your tongue and feel on your skin and fingertips? What does the full richness of this present moment look, sound, smell, taste, and feel like? Next, bring your awareness to your mind itself. What arises in the theater of your mind in your slow silence? Turn your attention inside without fear or judgment. Lovingly and gently watch what naturally arises for you. It might be an emotion, a thought, a sensation. Invite yourself to gently examine the contents of your inner world. You'll likely find that your mind will begin to wander. When you notice it being carried adrift by boredom, and distractions and disturbances, just gently bring it back again and again to your breath, your body, your sensations, to a specific thought, object, image, or words, whatever you're wanting to set your attention on. The important thing is not to identify with what's arising. You are not your thoughts. Don't fight them and don't cling to them. Just see them, witness them, and gently let them pass. Let your mind return to its former silence again and again as many times as you need. The heart of prayer is silence. The first stage in any successful meditation or prayer practice is to establish a firm and secure bedrock of silence, a crucial foundation to grow your practice upon. You may be able to get to that place of silence repeatedly with ease, or it might take weeks and months just to master this first step. It's okay, it will take as long as it needs, but just know that it's worth it, however long it takes. Remember to pace yourself. Prayer is a journey, not a sprint. In the act of prayer, start slowly. Don't exhaust all of your mental energy at the get-go. Slow down. You may not feel that calmness and presence that you're hoping for right away, but if you move slowly, you'll give it the chance to catch up with you. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, how is this any different from meditation? Firstly, good question. Secondly, you're right. Up until this point, everything that we've described is the same process as getting into meditation. If we were to stop here, we would be describing just that. But what comes next moves us from meditation to prayer, and that is dialogue. In meditation, we quiet the mind and strive to be at peace with whatever is going on inside. It's life-changing stuff, genuinely. In prayer, we open up that same space so that we can communicate, so that we can commune from the Latin communis to share that which is common between us. Now, I'm not going to prescribe with what or with whom you should communicate. It can be with your own soul, with nature, yourself, the cosmos, the spirit of your ancestors, with your own highest values, or with God, whatever that word means for you. You can fill in the blank for yourself. The main point is that you should feel that there is someone or something with which you can converse, communicate, speak and listen, hear and be heard by to talk about and share what's on your heart and mind, even if it's just yourself that you're speaking to. Just to make this point extra explicit, if I haven't already, you don't need to have any conception of or belief in God to engage meaningfully and productively in the act of prayer. Don't close yourself off from an exceedingly beneficial human technology that has survived the test of time and proved to be pro-adaptive for millennia across cultures just because some of the firmware feels like it might need upgrading. What do we say when we enter this dialogue? The canvas is yours to paint. I'm not going to tell you what to fill it with. But if I can, I'd recommend starting out with gratitude. 
begin by enumerating and articulating all of the things that you're grateful for. And be specific. Go slow and be granular. Cultivate that attitude of gratitude. It will do you wonders. If you're struggling to find what to be grateful for, you can start with some of the most basic things. You can give thanks for your beautiful body and the miraculousness of its every function, breath, digestion, perspiration. You can give gratitude for your soul, if that's a word that speaks to you, for your inner child, for that part of you that is pure and innocent, unsullied and unsullyable. You can sink into that place inside yourself that is miles deeper than any of your pain, trauma, sadness, loss, or fear, that pure core that wants the best for you and for all that you encounter, that part of you that never learned how to hate, that never lost faith in yourself and humankind. The Jewish day begins with a prayer that goes like this, O oh God, the soul that you place inside of me is pure. It is you who formed her. It is you who breathed her into me, and it is you who placed her in my care. This is a really important place to begin prayer from, from a knowledge that you're okay, you're good, you are loved. All of you, your dark and your light, your successes and your failures, your messes and mistakes, all of you is loved. From here we can begin to pray. You can pray with a script or you can freestyle it. You can pray with a song, a melody or a mantra. Whatever helps you pour out your heart with your words and with your silence in that labor of love that we call prayer. After expressing your gratitude, don't be shy to express your lack, your needs and desires, if that's what's coming up for you. And here's where things can get real. We spend so much of our time and energy keeping face, holding it together, not allowing our weakness and fragility to show up through the cracks even to ourselves. Prayer strips us of our pretenses. It invites us to show up authentically, to really feel and verbalize our pain, absence, frailty, fear, insecurities, and anguish. In prayer, wrote Amy Boniface, we lay before God our suffering, our rags, our filth, our fatigue, our nakedness, our hunger, and our misery. Let it all out. If you can dance like nobody's watching, then pray like only God is listening. This is the real work, the labor of prayer, the challenge to show up as honestly and authentically as you can. If you can do this successfully, you may find this as cathartic as an hour of therapy or journaling. Sometimes, or even often in prayer, you may not know what to say or how to say it. And that's okay. In fact, the central prayer of Judaism begins by admitting that we don't really know how to pray. It begins by asking God to teach us how to pray, by asking God to pray in us, with us, and through us. We say, God, open my lips so that my mouth may utter your praise. Adonai sefasai tiftach ufi yagit tehilatecha. Our words then become God's prayer. And prayer is not only about finding the right words to speak, it's also about learning to listen. In the silence of prayer, we can make space to listen to what God, or our own highest values and aspirations, want us to hear, if we can quiet the internal and external noise for just a moment. In my own experience of prayer, I find that that which I call God likes to play a game of hide-and-seek with me. At times, my prayers feel warm, orange, soft, kind, cozy, and present. And at other times, they're heavy, bleak, dark, dry, blue, and hollow. Through it all, prayer becomes a playful struggle in which I attempt to feel the presence of your absence, in the absence of your presence, to riff on Simone Way. But it's okay, you're a god who likes to play, so I'll play along. It's important to note that prayer is not only in the finding in those moments of bliss and presence. Prayer is also the looking, the searching, and the seeking. And that's the value of having a consistent prayer routine that we try to stick to, so that even when it doesn't feel like it's working, we still put in the work. 
And with that, we get two types of prayer. One in spontaneous moments, when one feels the needs to cry out in need or in gratitude, and the other as part of a daily planned routine, cultivating the disciplines and rituals which maintain our sanity and give shape to our days and to our lives. If you're looking for a daily prayer practice, I might suggest trying to pray once with sunrise to begin your day, a second time in the middle of the day to pause in the middle of everything for a moment, and a third and final time at the end of your day to take stock of the day that was and to set intentions for the day to come. The truth is that while we try to make time to carve out special moments in our day to connect and to pray, the real ideal is to be in a constant state of prayer. As Jack Derrida put it, not only do I pray, I have never stopped praying all my life. And as Etty Hillesum wrote in her journal, from within the valley of the shadow of the Nazi death camps, my life has become an uninterrupted dialogue with you, O God, one great dialogue. When we're able to embody a perpetual state of prayer, our lives, in effect, become a prayer. We no longer merely pray, we become prayer. Prayer is a rebellious act, an act of defiance in today's busy, noisy, and utilitarian world. Prayer is not about escaping reality and removing us from the world. Prayer, when done right, can instill within us a deep inner calm, preparing us to face the storms of life. Prayer grants us an eye to see reality under the aspect of eternity, to quote Spinoza. From prayer, we can come away with a deep compassion and love for all of existence. In the deep solitude and silence of prayer, we can find the gentleness necessary to truly love one another, to quote Thomas Merton. It is in prayer that we discover that the love of God and the love of our neighbor are truly one and inextricable, to quote the Bible. In prayer, we surrender ourselves from a narrow self-obsession to an expanse of care for all of reality. Prayer is a meditative therapeutic process to soothe the spirit and heal the mind, to redeem the soul, balm the body, reunite God and repair the world. Prayer has the potential to restructure our reality, to take us from an exhausting, lonely and anxious world of separation, isolation and alienation into a deep, slow, silent dialogue with God, nature, being and reality. Prayer is nothing more than an encounter with reality itself and the attempt to live in alignment with it. In prayer, we heal a divided, fragmented, and disintegrated psyche and the estranged, shattered, and conflicted world that it creates. In prayer, we create a quiet, soft mind and a kind, gentle world. In a world where God no longer speaks out loud to the prophets, instructing them in thundering silence about how beautiful this world could be if only we were able to focus on what really matters, to get away from all of our idols, and to love the stranger, protect the widow, and support the orphan. In the absence of prophecy where the gods spoke to us, we engage in prayer where we talk back to the gods, or to whoever's listening, to remind them what we're here for, to remind ourselves that we're here to love one another like ourselves, with all of our hearts and with all of our might. This is the invitation of prayer. And when enough of us join in together, we can create a world of prayer. Keep seeking.